Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and today we're talking about this pen. This is the Y Studio Classic Revolve Fountain Pen, which is a very long name for a pen. I will get in here, has the label on the back. You can see this is gonna be green. This was lent out to me by Kenro Industries. Thank you very much, Kenro, for letting me borrow this pen for review. Comes in this nice box. Good presentation here. Nice little bit of a little bit of foam on the lid there to uh, keep things right and tight inside the box. I like that. Good thinking ahead. We have a very nice booklet here that talks all about recommended inks and how to clean pens and how to scuff. Uh, no, that's not scuffing. Where's the scuffing part? There's definitely, yeah, there's a scuffing part right here, which is pretty cool. Then you have the scuffer, which is this piece of Japanese sandpaper. Look at that. That's pretty neat, I think. Uh, I have not scuffed my pen. You can see this is really nice uh, because it's not my pen. I'm, I'm borrowing it. This is the pen. Uh, usually the body cap and converter will go in those little voids, but I wanted to, you know, not take it apart and put it in a box. So uh, here we go. This is the Y Studio Classic Revolve fountain pen, which is solid brass, so it has some weight to it. It weighs in at 31 grams or just a bit over an ounce, like 1.1 ounces. So not terribly heavy with the cap off. It's 47 grams, about an ounce and a half with the cap on. So uh, fairly heavy, but not monstrous, I would say. It is hexagonal. You have these nice sides, which I like because you can just set it on your desk and it's not gonna roll away on you. It also has very simple branding they're relying on the look of the pen I think to be like hey this is a Y studio right here but you also have this little uh, logo right here this is Y studio and uh, that's kind of it there the top and the bottom just have circles of brass uh, nothing uh, nothing going on there no adornments then you have these little sort of sort of cutouts there across where the cap and the body meet which gives it a nice uh, little nice nice little waist there and kind of breaks up the lines. I think it looks pretty good. Cap comes off as a slip cap with a bit of a snap. Pretty satisfying snap cap. And this rotates freely, so you don't have to worry about lining up the sides to put it on. You can just put it on however you like and then line up the sides later. Yep, cool. The section on here uh, is a little bit narrow, and that's pretty well my only complaint with this pen is that the section is just a little bit narrow. It goes from 8.1 millimeters up to 9.8 millimeters, and then the body is a bit wider than that, of course. And so I end up holding it kind of like this. I'll put my thumb on a, on a flat side and hold my, my fingers here kind of middle-ish. And that works That works really well for me. But if I were somebody who held it very close to the nib, uh, I, I, would, I would find this too small. Yep. But the weight in the hand, I think is pretty good. My wife doesn't care for it. She thinks it's a little bit on the heavy side, but she prefers her pens to be lighter. And so solid brass is not really her jam. The nibs on these are only available in fine and medium. You can see that I have a medium here and it has some very nice uh, logo work on here. Just some lines, some little crisscross lines there, Y Studio and the nib size, and that's it, which is pretty good. I like that. This is a gold plated stainless steel nib and it looks like these are made in house. All of the advertising copy says things like, uh, you know, first pen with their own nib, which is pretty cool if they're making their own nibs. I like that. The body unscrews, you can see there is an O-ring there, which gives you a nice snug fit and it doesn't wanna unscrew itself just randomly in your pocket or anything like that. This comes off. You have a Y Studio branded converter that is also uh, brassy here. I think that's gotta be just some kind of plate or coloring or something. I don't think it's actually brass, but heck, maybe it is, I don't know. And you have a collar there. Uh, and I know the first time I went to put this on here, it didn't feel like it was gonna fit. I had to give it a little bit of extra push so don't be afraid to really push that converter on there until it sticks because uh, you don't want the converter to fall off inside your pen. Okay. Oh, I'm almost out of ink there. How about that? Okay, let's put this back together. There we go. Uh, and the length for this one, uncapped. Uh, I'm not going to do posted because you can't post this. Uh, obviously that's not gonna happen, but the length uncapped is just a bit under five inches. It's 4.91 inches, which is, I think, a pretty comfortable length that goes past the web of my hand, and so perfectly comfortable to write with. That's no problem at all. Uh, so there you go. All right, let's go ahead and look at it next to some other pens and then do a writing sample. And I don't wanna talk about another thing from Y Studio. So let's uh, clear this away, I'll be right back. 
Okay, so here is uh, the Y Studio Classic Revolve fountain pen next to a bunch of other uh, fountain pens and uh, other kinds of things. Here we have the Shown design. This is the new brass, uh, new brass pen from Shown. We have the Gravitas Pocket Pen, which is also brass. I decided to throw out some brass stuff here because why not? Then you have the Y Studio that we're talking about in this video. Then you have a Y Studio in copper that I've had for quite a while. This is the Y Studio Desk Pen, which is nice and long. It's a little bit wider. Uh, I really like this desk pen. It's always on my desk and inked up. And then lastly, for uh, something that everybody has probably had their hands or eyes on, this is the Lamy All-Star. This is actually white silver, and it's kind of blown out the camera. Let's, let's get another pen in here. There. <laughs> that is that is less shiny. This white silver, so shiny. Okay, so uh, there you go. So that's with uh, caps on, except for, of course, the desk pen. So let's take some caps off. Here we have, again, the Shown Design version 2 of the, the ballpoint fountain pen rollerball <laughs> pen that Ian has cooked up recently. You have the Gravitas uh, pocket pen, which is very short. Then you have the Y-Studio, the Y-Studio, and the Lamy. Now, when the first Y Studio Classic fountain pen came out, it had the had the cap with sort of a little lanyard hole on the top, and I avoided it because it looked too small. This one is the same size. I thought it was a different size, but it's actually the same length, and uh, it's a perfectly fine length. I wish I hadn't avoided the original fountain pen because this is pretty cool. Uh, it's the same size, more or less, as a Lamy All-Star or Safari, and that's a perfectly good length, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's cap some of the, or uh, post some of these pens because a couple of them are meant to be posted. All right, there you go. We can't post the Y Studio uh, Classic Revolve or the Desk Pen, of course, but we can post these and the Lamy, which give you a longer, uh, th longer pen to write with. And you can see that they're all longer than this one now. Although I wouldn't really cap the, I wouldn't really post the Lamy. I'll post it every once in a while, but not too much. But yeah, you know, just for continuity, why not? Okay, there we go. Let me do, uh, let me clear these away, and we'll put a little writing sample together. Okay, so here we have a Kikuyo Soft Ring. These are nice little notebooks and good to write in. Small for writing samples. This is the Y Studio. And as you can see, this medium nib writes very nicely. I haven't had any problems with this thing uh, drying out or giving me hard starts. You did see I had a little bit of a hard start here, but that is just because I've been sort of waving this around for a while now. So not really a problem. And this ink is Irishizuku's uh, CRO. So uh, pretty, pretty nice ink. And I really like the color of this coming out of this pen. It doesn't quite match or whatever, but still looks really nice. And also, of course, you can see it keeps up with the fast and the slow writing without problem. One thing I have noticed is that this nib is not the wettest nib, and uh, this ink, I think, is uh, not really a wet ink either. And so that means that sometimes you get it a little, it looks like uh, you're putting down more ink on a, like a, a downstroke because there's just a little bit of softness to, the, uh, to these nibs. And so sometimes you're letting up on like a circular stroke, as you do here, uh, downstrokes, heavy upstrokes, and circles are lighter. So you get a little bit of a fade out. Some folks really like that. I'm not the biggest fan. I like my nibs to be kind of a nail, but this is, uh, I mean, I've never had any problem with this writing, so this is going to be a matter of preference. I do think, though, that this medium nib is on the fine side. So I don't know what the fine nib is like, but I would guess the fine is uh, commensurably smaller. Like, maybe it's more like an extra fine. So uh, this one, I would say, I, I would go with a medium nib. I think the fine would be too small for me. This is a really good size. And uh, you can see in my, my written notes... It works really nicely on this material, uh, this, uh, this Franklin Christoph writing pad, one of their gray notebooks, and uh, it works great on here and feels really good. Very nice, precise little, uh, little medium nib. So there you go. All right, thanks very much for watching the pen thing. Oh, there is another thing. Uh, that's this. <laughs> I promised you another thing, and that is a Y Studio tape dispenser. The weight of words. I tell you, this is the weight of tape. I tell you. Listen to that clanking. Uh, this is a solid brass tape dispenser, which uh, is pretty darn heavy. So let's get in here um, like this. Carrie had some of these at the show. and says, here, take this home and show people this thing too. Uh, so I will. I provided the tape that didn't come with uh, tape at all, but this is a solid piece of brass, which is pretty great. It's 308 grams, which is 10.9 uh, ounces. It is... 
over half a pound. <laughs> so it's a, it's a weighty thing, the weight of tape. Uh, and it works pretty well. You grab the tape back here, cuts it. Uh, I will say I do kind of wish that this platform went out a little bit further to give me more room to grab the tape. But I've, I've always been able to grab like an edge of the tape here or here. And it hasn't been a problem. This kind of moves up and down, which is nice. So if you're pulling up, it kind of pulls pulls this whole thing up, but this roller itself is actually very heavy all by itself. So you don't have to worry about this coming loose by accident. It just isn't going to do that <laughs> because it is pretty solid. The other thing about these is that these little teeth are pretty serious. So I don't care what tape you put in there. This is going to cut that tape, but don't run your knuckles across it because uh, it will bite you. This one bit me a little bit today, just 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 while I was messing with it. So uh, it's got that, but it is uh, it is a nice looking tape dispenser. It works really well, and uh, I'll be a little bit sad to get this back. I kind of like it, even though it bit me. It's still still a good tape dispenser. Also, it's going to pick up uh, the same kind of uh, tarnish that other brass objects will, which will probably be if you're me. Looks like, where have I been grabbing it? Like here, you can see it's a little bit darker right here because I tend to grab it like this to use it. So I think that's kind of fun. It'll show, it'll kind of show like your individuality and like where you grasp an object and how you hold it. And I think, I think that's kind of neat. That's what the brassing effect is that uh, Y Studio likes about this brass stuff is it kind of picks up your individual usage. And I think that's neat. Now the price of this is fairly steep. It is between 79 and $100 uh, in various places online. So uh, it is not a casual desk accessory but it is fancy and if you're looking for a real fancy looking tape dispenser i think this fits the bill it's very cool just watch out for those teeth watch out for those teeth they're, they're pretty serious. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about these things down there in the comments. And uh, if you go and buy one of these, tell your vendor that I said hi. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.